This is the virtual campaign. On the ballot, why wait? The time is now. This is the virtual campaign. On the ballot now. The UNC candidate for the constituency of Tonopuna, Mr. David Naki. I wish all my brothers and sisters in each and every community of Trinidad and Tobago a hearty welcome to our virtual meeting, and specifically to the amazing constituents of Tinapuna who embody the diversity and dynamism manifested, manifested writ large throughout our beloved country. As a former player and captain of our national team, and a man who has been involved in political and social activism internationally, I have been in the public eye for most of my life. Although some of my struggles for social, economic, and racial equality have been controversial, my integrity and intentions remain unquestionable. I was therefore blown away by the courage of our political, poli political leader with her out-of-the-box thinking and a screening committee to nominate me as the man to lead the economic, social, cultural and sporting revival of the great village of Tinapuna. It is a duty and responsibility that I will attack with unerring commitment and dedication. The famous African-American author, poet and civil rights activist Maya Angelou wrote, if, so, if someone shows you who they are, believe them. Fact, for 43 of 58 years, the People's National Movement has governed this country, and for 58 of those 58 years, has had representation in the most underserved, under-resourced, and poverty-stricken communities in the nation that exists. This present government has indeed shown the entire national community what they are made of, and we as a nation have suffered for it. Fact, the worst performing schools in Trinidad and Tobago to paraphrase the academic Theodore Lewis, are the schools located in areas considered PNM strongholds. Subsequently, but not surprisingly, leading to the highest rates of unemployment, crime, and poverty throughout those self-same communities. 43 out of 58 years. Fact, Trinidad and Tobago is ranked 84th on the corruption index worldwide out of 180 countries and continues its slide under this present government, 43 out of 58 years. It is with these facts in hand that I intend to present Tinapuna as a model of development to the national community over the next five years of dynamic change served by a UNC government. Within 10 days of being the UNC's candidate for Tinapuna, my team and I have already identified 15 major areas of neglect that exist within the constituency and are already engaged in the transformation necessary to meet the needs of the people. I will mention now for the sake of time, five. One, we will transform Tinapuna into the health industrial hub of the Caribbean, perfectly located along the east-west corridor with highly recommended private medical facilities and health services. The UNC government intends to revive and expand the Flailin Academy of Nursing and Allied Health. I have spoken with the various stakeholders, and they have lamented the fact that our better qualified nurses and healthcare technicians have no choice but to seek greener pastures abroad. As a person intimately familiar with my mother's work in the healthcare industry for 50, over 50 years of her life, I'm having, having had the honor to be the first matron of the Mount Hope Medical Complex. It is painful to see the almost inhumane treatment of healthcare workers by the present PNM government, where nurses have to strike for their just due instead of being allowed to do what I know they love best, assisting and improving the lives of fellow citizens. With facilities such as COSTAT and UWE already in place in the Tinapuna constituency, an entire line of healthcare workers from scrub technicians, lab technicians, 
technicians, radiographers, dental assistants, occupational and physiotherapists can be educated and immediately employed in what will be a revived and expanded Cora Hospital. Arima Hospital and a host of other medical facilities along the East West Corridor will serve as a perfect pipeline. Not only will the massive unemployment in the constituency be alleviated, but the transition from living below the poverty line to meaningful, well-paid jobs removes the need for entering into the ever-waiting illegal activity, thereby transforming the underrepresented communities. I've already initiated three agribusinesses and, and a mango process industry to benefit the unemployed youth of the constituency. It is inconceivable, as my second point, that a constituency has as its borders the Coral River with six million gallons of water flowing daily, and the St. Joseph River with four million gallons of water flowing daily, should be without water in their homes for without days and on end for months. I have personally visited communities from first and second trace into Napuna proper to Lamango, Wharf Trace, and La Saiba on its outskirts. And not only the inadequacy, but the idiocy, idiocy of this PNM government water delivery and supply is appalling. As my fearless cousin says, catch it, store it, and deliver it, because it is there. I couldn't agree more. We of the incoming UNC government will do precisely that. As citizens struggling to make ends meet are paying both wasa and water suppliers in order to have a semblance of dignified living. The credo of water is life has long been cast away by uncaring PNM policies. I have already delivered two community water tanks, and we built a garbage collection point that was urgently needed by the Lamango community. I have also identified two locations where reservoirs can be constructed to enable a proper and constant water supply to all constituents. The water is there and has always been there. Now the political will of our honorable political leader will be implemented. Everyone who travels through the Tinapuna constituency dreads the traffic that will be encountered at almost any time day or night. I have immediately identified that traffic relief will come not with not only the proper implementation of one-way traffic at peak hours on designated roads, but the construction of a bridge over the Kova River into the five rivers to avoid the bottleneck congestion as drivers try to reconnect with the Eastern Main Road. Better flowing traffic will encourage not only more commercial and retail activity, but will incentivize investors into the constituency. Competition will compel store owners to upgrade and provide employment to the constituents of Tinapuna. The road infrastructure, which has never been addressed by an uncaring and visionless PNM, will have to be improved to facilitate this new and simple solution to the atrocious traffic congestion currently present in Tinapuna. I have already identified 35 major potholes in this constituency and paid for the, for the proper filling and grading of these swimming pools, as they are called, in locations like Lakpat Road, St. Cecilia Road, and Rock Bay Road, to name a few. The political leader and her will is again at work. For the issue of garbage collection was even more startling to me than that of the gigantic potholes. More than 57 unattended and putrid sites were identified by my team. As stated before, one has already been rebuilt and by next week, 20 of these locations will be cleaned by my team with proposals to the delinquent and never present Tinapuna Piaco Regional Corporation and its current MP, Esmond Ford, being sent protocols on how to advise to be advised on how to manage proper garbage collection and how to possibly engage the help of your party's political leader, Dr. Keith Rowley. Esmond, pick up the phone and call him like we do in the UNC. Was a, he has obviously ignored you and by extension the people of Tinapuna. The elephant, the elephant in my address to you, my fellow citizens, is patently obvious, the issue of crime. It plagues not only Tinapuna, but the entire East West Corridor. 
The PNM government and the arrogant, misguided tribal policies of its leaders has never addressed the root, the root cause of crime, only its manifestations. So the commissioner of police is given the Herculean task, almost impossible task, of stopping crime. But those who are aware know that the COP is not equipped to fight the social inequities that fuel crime. Crime will only abate when the national community has equal access to the resources of the Treasury. The PM has never cared about the lives of their so-called base. The facts prove it despite the money that they spend on social media imaging. But the country has had enough. The people, regardless of their political position, persuasion, are crying out for transformation, one of a holistic nature, one that brings us together as Trimbegonians, all of us. No longer must there be an Indo party or an African party. And our political leader has shown the necessary bravery and political will just by her selection of young, diverse candidates to represent you, the people. Anyone who selects a David Nakid as a prospective MP so serious intent to transform the country. And Kamla Prasad Bisasa is that person. I will not let you down. She will not let you down. You, my fellow citizens, must not let yourselves down anymore. Let UNC be your change, your holistic transformation, as we enrich, enrich and empower all communities to eventually emerge as one united Trinidad and Tobago. May Almighty God bless and keep you all safe and rightly guided.